In this video, we're going to have a look at what's meant by a Python instance method. Let's consider this computer program. And here you can see we have the definition of a class that I've called demo class. Within the class, we have this method here. And the method takes in three parameters. And on this line, you can see that we add up two of the parameters that are passed in. The result of that addition is passed to this variable and then we return the added values. Now the truth is this is a nonsense class and I'm just using it so we don't have to get too tied up with any algorithms because what I want to do, I want to discuss why this here we'll see is going to be an instance method when we create instances of this particular class, in other words objects of this class. Before I go on to look at this code, what I'd like to do is to have a diagrammatic view of the demo class. And you can see that here. And you can see we have a class name. And in this area, it is usual for us to put the behaviors. And the way in which behaviors are implemented in Python is with methods. So this is an example of a method here. And if you look at it, you can see it corresponds to this line here, where here we have add them. This is called add them, and in the brackets here we can see we have self x and y, which corresponds to the self x and y here. Now in this area we usually have attributes. Now attributes in Python are really essentially variables, but we'll talk about that at some later date. So this particular class we can see has a name, and it has this behavior here, which is a method. And behaviors and methods mean effectively the same thing. But it's usual when we're talking about code to talk about these as being methods. If we come down here, what we can see that I'm going to be creating with this code three objects. And these objects are going to be instances of the demo class. So if we have a look at the execution space, what will happen with this particular line is we're going to create an instance of the demo class, which I'm showing here. Now this name will be bound to this particular instance and I'm showing this instance as this shape as I've done in all previous videos and this shape represents an object and this name is bound to this object now in previous videos I've shown this as a label but I'm just sticking it underneath here and we have to realize that this name is bound to this object and if we look here we can see that we have the method now that's the method that was declared here in the class and appears here in this diagrammatic representation of a class, which by the way is taken from UML artifacts. It's not quite in UML format, but it's pretty close. If we come onto this particular line, we're going to create another instance of the demo class and I'm showing that here. So now this name is bound to this object and we can see this object has this particular method. And if you look at what this method has, it has self, x and y passed to it. So we can see that that method is based on this that appears in the class. Now, of course, this particular line here, this is going to create another instance of the demo class, as we can see here. So this name is bound to this object, and we can see this object also has this particular method. Now, what I would like to stress at this particular point is that each of these objects exist in their own right, and this, this and this, all exist within their own object. And because they exist in their own objects, and these objects are called instances of the class, then these are all called instance methods. It's as simple as that, really. But what we have to realize is that this particular definition appears here in the class, but the fact that we have got self here tells us that this is going to be a method that belongs to the instance. And we discussed this in the previous video. This, in truth, is a function that is called the method because it's a function that's going to be bound to the instance of this particular class. Let's now consider this program statement. Here we can see we have a message. And the message is going to be to the object to which this name is bound. And this is going to be the method that's invoked in that particular object. So here we can see the runtime area. And what we can see, if we look at the diagram, is that this particular line here is going to result 
in this particular message. And this message is actually going to cause this instance method to execute. And of course, what will happen, self will receive the ID of this object, and X will receive this 1, and Y will receive this 2. Of course, if we now come up here to the definition, what we know is this self has received the ID of the object, this X will have received 1, and Y will have received 2. And of course, on this particular line here, we will add up 1 to 2, which will give us 3, and you can see I have that 3 appearing here. And of course, that 3 is assigned to added values. And this line will now return the 3, as we can see in the animation. And of course, we now print this 3, and the 3 gets printed to the screen, as you can see here. And then, of course, this particular program statement will now finish. Of course, the program will now execute this particular line, and here we can see we have the message, and we can demonstrate the message in the diagram as appearing here. And of course, what's now going to happen, this instance of the method is going to execute, and self will receive the ID of this object, and X will receive this value of 4, the Y will receive this value of 5. So if we come up here now to the definition in the class, we now know that this particular definition is tied to this object. In other words, this definition is now an instance method within this particular instance of the class, i.e. this object. And we know that self is going to receive the ID of that object, x is going to receive 4, y is going to receive 5, they get added up here, which is 9. 9 is assigned to added values. And of course, then we return added values. So I'm going to show that in the animation as the 9 appearing here. And of course, that 9 is now going to be returned to this position. And we print the 9. And the 9 appears here, as you can see in the output. And then, of course, this program statement ends. Now, this program statement will execute, and we can see in the brackets that we have the message. And on this occasion, we're passing 33 and 67. So if we look to the animation, what we know is going to happen, we know we're going to get a message. And this message is going to invoke the instance method of the object that's bound to the name object 3. And of course, when we pass the 33 and the 67, what's going to be generated is going to be 100, because when you add 33 and 67, you get 100. And I'm showing that 100 appearing here. And of course, that's now going to be returned by the method to this particular position. And of course, the 100 will now be output to the runtime, as you can see here. And of course, now this particular program statement finishes and the program finishes. And we can see that because these chevrons here appear. So hopefully what this particular nonsense program has shown is that each of the objects have their own copy of the method that was defined in the class. And these own copies are referred to as instance methods. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.